In this quick tip, we are going to talk about how to tell the difference between two dogs who are fighting or playing, because it's not always easy to tell the difference. Wow, that sounds scary, right? Like maybe those dogs are trying to kill each other. But are they really or are they just playing? Hi everybody, welcome to Dunbar Academy Quick Tips. I'm Jamie Dunbar, and before we get started, please make sure you're subscribed so you never miss one of our videos. And if you want to learn more about managing out of control dog behavior, you should sign up for our free Out of Control Dog Summit, live February 20th to 24th, 2023, or check out our free courses on DunbarAcademy.com. You'll find links for both in the description below. Okay, sometimes when our dogs play, they get excited and that can lead to over the top play. This sort of play can make people uncomfortable if they don't know your dog or you don't know theirs. That's why I'm going to show you what you should look for when you are watching dogs interact like this to figure out whether the dogs are fighting or playing. The first thing we're going to do is turn off the volume because one of the big things that makes this footage seem so scary is the sound. But when it comes to dog-dog interactions, the vocalizations can be very misleading. So let's play that same video clip again, but this time without the scary sounds. This will make it much easier to pay more attention to the body language, which is a far more accurate way of interpreting dog behavior. Generally speaking, the big thing you want to look for is bouncy rhythmic movement. When dogs are playing, they bounce, hop, bend, and wiggle. They make a lot of unnecessary movements in a way that communicates that they are ready to play. When dogs are afraid or anxious, they are usually very still and stiff. Either that, or they are actively trying to keep others at bay by barking, growling, snapping, and lunging. But those movements are usually pretty abrupt and to the point. There's not a lot of wiggling or bouncing going on. Now, if you want to get quantitative and technical about it, you could even count the frequency with which a dog bends a knee or elbow. This specific movement is a good sign that a dog is in a playful mood, regardless of what sort of vocalization they are making at the same time. In this video, the dogs are constantly bending their elbows, often both elbows at once, in a play bow, which is another great sign of playful intentions. You should also keep your eyes out for the dog's tongues. When a dog sticks out their tongue, it's often another sign that the dog is at ease and feeling playful. Another thing to notice about this play session is the tempo. They run around and chase each other very actively at times, but there are also times where they both stop immediately for a brief pause. These consensual pauses in the middle of flurries of high activity are one way that the dogs can check in with each other. And when you see both dogs pausing together like this, it's a great sign that they are getting along just fine. You can also see that the play goes back and forth. It's not just one dog running away from another dog in search of safety or shelter, but instead they're all over the place, going one direction, then another, and they trade off who is doing the chasing. If you are worried that one of the dogs is not enjoying the play session, simply put the other dog on leash and see what happens. Where does the free dog go? Do they move away from the dog that is restrained or towards them? Do they try to engage with the restrained dog or do they keep their distance? If the free dog is moving towards the restrained dog and trying to engage with them, then it's a great sign that they are not afraid and that they are enjoying the play session. If you want to be super sure, you can reverse the roles and see what happens. Proximity tells you everything. If a free dog goes willingly towards another dog or person, it's a great sign that the dog wants to be near that dog or person. So, with all of this in mind, we can safely say that while this play session might look and sound scary, it's actually just two dogs playing happily. That said, just because the dogs are enjoying this play session doesn't mean that it's okay. This play style looks and sounds scary, and while it might be fine when you're at home with familiar dogs and people, it might upset people you don't know if your dog tried engaging like this at the park with unfamiliar dogs. That's why it's important to teach your dog to play in a more socially acceptable manner, by not making such loud, scary noises, and by not chasing other dogs too much. And most importantly, by being ready to stop chasing another dog anytime you ask. The best way to do this is by actively managing dog-dog play sessions. First, 
you'd want to teach your dog to speak and shush on cue so that during a play session, you can tell them shush and it might actually mean something to your dog. Speak. Good dog, good dog. There's a good dog. Good dog, okay. Not bad, Duke. Shush, shush, shush. Then you'd interrupt the play when it's getting too loud to make sure you can get control when you ask for it and to ask your dogs to play more quietly. Duke, shush, shush. Good dog. That's a good dog. You can play. Yeah, play. Play. Come on. Good dog. By interrupting play sessions frequently, you can keep them from getting too wild and you can ensure that you can get control whenever you want. And one of the best things about interrupting dogs when they are playing is that once they've done what you've asked them to do, you can let them go back to playing again as the reward to reinforce the behaviors you like. All right, if you'd like to see the rest of this training session and how my dad, Dr. Ian Dunbar, manages the play session to make the dogs play in a more socially acceptable manner, you should sign up for our free online out of control dog training summit using the link in the description below. You'll get free access to Dr. Ian Dunbar's full video about managing over the top dog dog play. Okay, to review. One. When dogs are playing, it can sometimes look, and especially sound, like they are trying to hurt each other. Two, try to ignore the vocalizations and focus instead on the body language. Look for bouncy, bendy, wiggly movements as these are signs that a dog is feeling comfortable and playful. Three, proximity tells you everything. Do both dogs move willingly towards the other one when they have the freedom to do otherwise? If you want to be sure, you can put one dog on leash and see what the free dog does and where they go. Four, just because dogs are playing doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't intervene. It's important that you can control your dog when they're playing actively with another dog, and it's important that your dog knows how to play in a manner that won't upset or scare other dogs or people. Interrupting play sessions frequently will keep them from getting too crazy and ensure that you can get control whenever you want. All right, thanks for watching Dunbar Academy Quick Tips. I am Jamie Dunbar, and I hope you have fun training your dog. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.